that Joe DiMaggio's monument will be slightly higher than all the other four in Monument Park in the most historic place in sports. Don Mattingly's plaque was dedicated in 1997 here in Monument Park, and here's what it looks like exactly, the higher advantage of Joe DiMaggio. You see the half inch above the line of Donnie Baseball's plaque? I'll slide over here to Joe DiMaggio, and you can see it's a full two inches above everyone else, just the way Mickey Mantle said it should be. Stay with us on MSG. The ceremonies to unveil Joe D's monument get set to go in a moment. Park the fifth Yankee monument to be unveiled today, draped in a Yankee banner for Joe DiMaggio. It's quite a process. The monument itself weighs over two and a half tons. Hi, everybody. Al Trowick back with you. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to have quite a ceremony. It'll be anchored by John Sterling from the Yankee radio booth. And we're honored today to have Hank Bauer, Jerry Coleman, Phil Rizzuto, Whitey Ford, his 1951 teammates. They'll all be part of the ceremonies. Joe D's family is here. And it'll be quite a moment when they take the ride out to Monument Park to see the unveiling of the monument to honor their father. And then later, of course, the Yankees will take on the Toronto Blue Jays, David Cohn against Kelvin Escobar of this young and very good Toronto Blue Jays staff. We had the good fortune to be here at Yankee Stadium on Monday to actually see the arrival of Joe DiMaggio's monument. I told you how heavy it is, and big-time machinery was brought into action to make sure this thing uh, was put into place. It took about two hours. The monument is sort of an orangey brown and black granite, the same as Miller Huggins and George Herman Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig and Mickey Mantle. In fact, Joe D's monument was cut from the same piece of granite that Mickey Mantle's was. It was ordered at the same time when Mantle's monument was ordered. It's called Balmoral Granite. It's from Finland. The workers first prepared the foundation, then lowered the monument into place, and then prepared to seal off the base of the monument and hopefully it will stay that way forever, as long as Yankee Stadium remains in the Bronx. The plaque was crafted with extraordinary care. Joe's plaque on the uh, back wall of Monument Park was recast. They used clay and they used bronze. Bob Wilkinson, who runs Yankee Stadium, George Steinbrenner, very much involved in making sure this process was speedy and good and worthy of the honor of Joe DiMaggio. You know, he touched so many lives and so many people have been touched who didn't even see him play. He did everything with grace and class and dignity, and we didn't know it at the time, but Joe DiMaggio's appearance at Yankee Stadium at Joe DiMaggio Day last year near the conclusion of the 1998 World Championship season would be his last. There are 15 numbers retired out there in Monument Park. One number is retired, retired twice. That's the number eight of Bill Dickey and Yogi Berra. And there you see the monuments in place. One bullpen on one side, one bullpen on the other. Billy Martin, Reggie Jackson, Don Mattingly. Phil Rizzuto's number 10, Roger Maris is number nine. Thurman Munson, the first African-American to play for the Yankees, number 32. Thurman, number, Thurman Munson's number 15, his locker still stands here at Yankee Stadium. Whitey's number 16, the two number eights of Bill Dickey and Yogi Berra. They gave Yogi number eight before they retired Bill Dickey's. Casey Stingles, number 37. The Mix, number seven. Joe DiMaggio's number five. Babe Ruth's number three. And the first number ever retired by the Yankees, Luke Gehrig's number four. The ceremonies are getting started now. On the field, Bob Shepard is introducing John Sterling. Thank you very much, Bob. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on this beautiful Sunday to Yankee Stadium. Today, a baseball legend will receive the highest honor in this historic franchise can bestow, a monument in the hallowed grounds of Yankee Stadium's Monument Park. Only four times in Yankee history has this honor been bestowed. The first, in 1932, to their beloved manager, Miller Huggins, who guided the Yankees to the first three of their world championships that now has grown to an unprecedented 24 world championships.
in July of 1941, one month after his death, the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig, joined his longtime manager in center field. Seven years later, the Yankees honored George Herman Babe Ruth with the third monument. These three legends stood alone for nearly 50 years. Then in 1996, the fourth monument, that of Mickey Charles Mantle, joined the sacred ground in Monument Park. And now, today, we're proud to pay tribute to the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio, by dedicating a fifth monument in his honor. Although it's been nearly half a century since he graced center field, Joe DiMaggio remains in the hearts of baseball fans, young and old. Some are lucky enough to have had the privilege of seeing the Yankee Clipper play. Many have never seen the famed number five in center field. But we've all been touched by the grace and the dignity of this Yankee legend in some way. Let's remember the way things were so many years ago. Close your eyes and journey to our field of dreams. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Yankee Stadium and game six of the 1951 World Series. And here are the lineups. For the New York Giants, leading off at second base, number 12, Eddie Stanky, number 12. Batting second at shortstop, Number 19, Alvin Dark. Number 19. Batting third at first base. Number 25, Whitey Lockman. Number 25. Batting fourth in left field. Number 20, Monty Irvin. Number 20. Batting fifth at third base, number 23, Bobby Thompson, number 23. Batting sixth in right field, number 16, Hank Thompson, number 16. Batting seventh, the catcher, number nine, Wes Westrom, number nine. Batting eighth, Batting eighth in, center field, in center field, number 24, number 24. Willie Mays, Willie. number 24. Willie. Batting ninth, Willie. and pitching, Willie. number 31, number 31. Dave, Dave Coslow, number 31. Number 31. Number 31. And for the and Yankees. For the Yankees. <laughs> Leading off Leading at shortstop, at shortstop. Number 10, Phil Rizzuto, number 10. Batting second at second base, number 42, Jerry Coleman, number 42. Batting third, the catcher, number eight, Yogi Berra, number eight. 
Batting fourth in center field, number five, Joe DiMaggio, number five. Batting fifth at third base, number 12, Gil McDougall, number 12. Batting sixth at first base, number 36, Johnny Mize, number 36. Batting seventh in right field, number 25, Hank Bauer, number 25. Batting eighth in left field, number 14, Gene Woodling, number 14. Batting ninth and pitching, number 17, Rick Rashi, number 17. That was October 10th, 1951, game six of the World Series. The New York Yankees won that game, captured their 14th World Championship. That game also marked the last time the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio, would don the pinstripes. Isn't it incredible, 49 years later, PA announcer Bob Shepard is still announcing the Yankee championship lineups of today. The voice of Yankee Stadium, Bob Shepard. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the area behind home plate. Let's welcome five of those teammates who played alongside the Yankee Clipper in that final game. The second baseman, Jerry Coleman. The third baseman, Gil McDougal. to introduce a man who exemplifies the Yankee spirit. He spanned the championship years from Joe DiMaggio to Mickey Mantle. Friend and teammate to both, a legend to us, Hall of Famer, Chairman of the Board, Whitey Ford. Now, please welcome a distinguished guest, District Attorney of New York County, Robert Morgenthau. Now it's my privilege to introduce the DiMaggio family. Granddaughter, 
Kathy DiMaggio Stein and her husband, Roger Stein. Granddaughter, Paula DiMaggio Hamra. Time, DiMaggio friend and confidant, Morris Engelberg. Now please rise, ladies and gentlemen, and direct your attention to the microphone. Joining and the Yankees in welcoming his eminence, Cardinal John O'Connor, for a very special invocation. Almighty God. Almighty God. Joe DiMaggio always thanked you for making him a Yankee. Today, we thank Joe DiMaggio for becoming a Yankee. As we come together, to dedicate this memorial to your servant, Joe DiMaggio. We ask your blessing on his family, on all of us, and especially on all athletes and their families. Keep them safe from harm and injury and instill in them a respect for one another in a special way. We ask your kindness that this ball field and its facilities, this famous Yankee Stadium, will contribute to renewing the spirit and strengthening the mind and body Grant that all who meet here may find the enrichment of companionship and sportsmanship and together offer you the praise that is your due. Lead Joe DiMaggio and all of us to the rewards of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe DiMaggio was very involved in many charitable endeavors, especially here in New York with the Police Athletic League. Let's welcome with some thoughts on Joe D's charitable endeavors, District Attorney Robert Morgenthau. Joe DiMaggio was the Yankee and the American athlete from 1936 to 1951. Uh, you are Yankee fans. You do not need me to tell you what he did in this venerable stadium. But the championships do not tell the full story of the man. Joe DiMaggio is special because there is no other way to put it. He had class. 
He knew that sports stardom creates a debt to the community and especially to the kids. No New York boy or girl ever had to plead, say it ain't so, Joe. I work with the Police Athletic League. As a result, long after the cheers faded, I saw Joe DiMaggio at his finest. Two years ago, he agreed to fly from Florida to be the guest of honor at our sports night. No fees, no fuss. Just, how can I help? The next time I saw him here at the stadium, he volunteered to fly again to New York. Those two years, he gave four autographed pictures that we auctioned for $20,000. When he heard, he said, if I had known their value, I'd have given you 10 more. Over the last years of Joe DiMaggio's life, he gave his name to the Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital near his home in Florida on one condition, that the hospital could never turn away a child who could not pay. Since then, Four million dollars has been given to treat children. And without press attention, without thanks, he went from bed to bed touching the kids, many of them terminally ill, with his class. He knew that that was right. Joe DiMaggio was not just a great Yankee, the Clipper was a great man and a great American. It is, it is proper that we do him honor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most popular personalities in the history of New York, a Yankee, as a player and broadcaster for about 60 years, the Scooter, Phil Rizzuto. Uh, thank you very much. It's a little unexpected for me up here, but we were fortunate enough to play so many years with Joe DiMaggio and had the privilege of watching him roam in the outfield. Never made a tough play, never had to dive for a ball or lose his hat, but he was uncanny the way he'd get a jump on the ball. And then the best thing was to see him hit a triple and get those long legs of his running, going from first to third. I mean, he was a thing of beauty. And Joe should be remembered. And we have a beautiful day, and the Cardinal made sure of that. But Joe right now is up there with all his other buddies. Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, Thurman Munson, so many more. Now, there were two that I'm going to mention, the only two I know of that made Joe laugh and relax, Lefty Gomez and Billy Martin. And we know that Joe is up there down, looking down. He's a very proud man, and he's been proud of these Yankee teams, especially 96 when they were great, 97 when they almost were great, but 98 when they were the best team ever in baseball. Like I say, he's looking down now with a big smile on his face. So what he said, we give him a big rousing ovation for the Yankee Clipper. Holy cow! was an American hero 
who continued to symbolize the values of America during a time when heroes were few and far between. From baseball legend to American icon, Joe DiMaggio was immortalized in a 1968 classic song called Mrs. Robinson. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the area in center field. Here to pay a special tribute to Joe DiMaggio is New York's own singer, songwriter, lifelong Yankee fan, Mr. Paul Simon. to Joe DiMaggio, journey to the hallowed grounds of Monument Park. Let's turn our attention to the Diamond Vision and take one last look at the life of a beautiful man. Although he has left this world, Joe DiMaggio's legacy will continue long after we are gone. The Yankee Clipper, the greatest living ball player, jolting Joe DiMaggio.
Ladies and gentlemen, now please direct your attention to the Diamond Vision or Monument Park as the fifth monument ever dedicated by the Yankees is unveiled in the honor of the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. Joseph Paul DiMaggio, the Yankee Clipper, 1914-1999. Recognized as baseball's greatest living player. Lifetime batting average, 325. Won MVP award, 1939, 1941, 1947. Selected to All-Star Game 13 times. American League batting title 1939-1940. Elected to Hall of Fame 1955. Set one of baseball's most enduring records, 56 game hitting streak, May 15th to July 16th, 1941 led the Yankees to an incredible nine world championships in his 13-year career. A baseball legend, an American icon. He has passed, but he will never leave us. Dedicated by the New York Yankees, April 25th, 1999. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen April, 25th, April 25th, 1999, 1999 the, Yankees the Yankees remember, remember the, Yankee Clipper, the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio. He, will he will always be remembered. Be remembered. Thank, you very much. Thank you very much. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the game. ceremonies spectacularly executed by the New York Yankees here today. Bob Shepard announcing the starting lineup for the 1951 Game 6 of the World Series. Paul Simon singing in center field. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. It was an absolute thrill and an honor to be here at Yankee Stadium today. Meanwhile, the players are getting set to play this one, and I thought the Yankees did themselves proud with the way they were most attentive during the entire ceremony today to honor number five, Joe DiMaggio, the fifth member of the Yankees to have a monument in Monument Park. We'll be back on MSG in a moment. We'll hear from Toronto Blue Jay David Wells, perhaps the last member of the Yankees to see Joe DiMaggio here at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx.